Hallelujah. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Pastor and Missionary Evangelist Brad Spurlock coming to you with another episode of Blessed Hope. And I'm so glad that you are here and that we have come together. Oh, let us seek the Lord and His presence. And in His presence is fullness of joy at His right hand, our pleasures forevermore. In His presence, the transformation occurs because where Jesus is, the change naturally comes supernaturally. And so as we lift up the name of Jesus, we can truly expect the miraculous to manifest in our presence. And so let us just open up this time in a brief word of prayer, and then we will get right into the reading of the scriptures. Father, right now, we come, Lord, with joy in our hearts for who you are. Holy Spirit, I speak in right now wisdom and revelation, illumination of your word, Lord, to your people. I speak, hallelujah, I speak today, God, for salvation to come to many today, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way, Lord. Use this transmission, Lord, to bring the people. You're the one that draws them in, that regenerates them, that makes them a new creation in you. And so, behold, today is the day of salvation. Lord, where you destroy the works of the devil, set the captives free, you open the prison doors and shatter every chain of darkness. So, Lord, I speak it in now. Have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be reading in the book of John, the 10th chapter, and this is referring to Jesus as our good shepherd. And I'm going to pick up here in uh, verse 8. And it reads, these are the words of Jesus. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. When you have an intimate relationship with the Lord, when you have an intimate relationship with, with, with anybody in, in, in this natural world, you know that person. You know their heart. You know their voice. You know their character, what lies within them. And the longer you have this established relationship with them, the much more profound that you know this person. And so as with Jesus, here he had mentioned this, you know, and this is an interesting point, that all whoever came before him, you know, Jesus talked about even the times approaching that there will be many people, false Christ, antichrist, uh, that will, are there, are coming to deceive the people that do not know Jesus, that do not know his voice. And so, beloved, today, the invitation is there to come into the family of God. And so you can know him today. And when you establish this relationship, it is a joyous, glorious invitation like the world does not know. But also for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, I pray that you walk with discernment, walking, hearing the voice of the Lord, not through natural ears, but through the, the spiritual ears in our spirit. Because when we know the voice of the one that we love, the know the voice in intimacy, in the intimate place, where even when we're forged in the fire during the storms of life, that we can walk in his peace, walk in that relationship that the world cannot break, the world cannot hinder, nor, nor, nor put out the holy fire that burns within us, because we know the one that we love, the one that has given his life for us. And then at this point, we will not be deceived. But as Jesus said, all who come before me are thieves and robbers. The lies and the deception of this world, know it for what it is. And so, because when you hear the voice of the true voice of the truth, as Jesus said, he's the way and the truth. And so truth speaks truth. And so it, it emanates from, from this place of perfection. And so, but when Jesus speaks, we should immediately hear the voice of the Lord. When we hear counterfeit voices, we should immediately also have a check in our spirit, a heaviness. Jesus said, come to me all who are weary and, and burdened and heavy laden for my yoke is is easy and my burden is light. And so in him, it is life. It, 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 he liberates those that are in captivity. And so beloved today, I pray that you would come to this point of having this transformation in your life. But so the sheep though, they did not follow them because they did not hear them because they did not hear the voice of the one they loved. And as we read here, this great verse, I am the door. This is the words of Jesus. I am the door. 
All who come before him are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them because he is the door. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the door to life everlasting. The, the broad road leads to destruction and there are many who go by it, but narrow is the gate. Jesus is the door. He is the only way. The, Jesus, uh, the, the Bible talks about that Jesus, he is the one mediator, the one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus Christ and Christ alone. He he is the door to, G, uh, to, to God Almighty. If anybody enters by me, he will be saved. And he will go in and out and find pasture. Hallelujah. These are the ever-changing words of Jesus Christ. These are the words of Jesus that do not change, but change the lives of men. I am the door. We talk in this life of, of seeking doors, doors of opportunities. If this door opens or if this uh, uh, opportunity trans, uh, uh, tr uh, you know, transpires or this door opens,
salvation. We cannot live a good enough life and go to heaven on our own merit. No, it is only about what Jesus Christ has done. And so this is why he is the good shepherd, because the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has given his life for me, and so I give my life to him. I am opening my heart to you now because there is nothing in this world that compares to my relationship with Jesus Christ. Beloved, you can know today this relationship, even during the despair and the turbulence and the tribulation of this life, that Jesus Christ he is my rock eternal. He does not move. He does not falter. He does not fail. He is my strength and strength everlasting because I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. There is nothing in this world that will shake my faith in Jesus. They may try to knock me down, but I will get back up because when Jesus decrees, he decrees with all authority. Jesus said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me and when he calls he calls as a loving good shepherd but he also calls as the king of kings and the lord of lords in him jesus christ is all the fullness of the godhead bodily and it says in colossians 2 that we are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power what more do we need what more do we need but to take the next step of faith? When you have a relationship that is built upon this love of, 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 of this goodness and faithfulness of God, that even when we don't understand, when we don't see the way out, when we maybe don't even see the next step, He is there. He is there, beloved. There in your trouble, there in the storms that you are countering, there when other people are mistreating you, abusing you, abandoning you. He is there. He will stick to you closer than a brother. He gives his life for the sheep. He is the God of this infinite universe of all power and authority, but wants your heart as well. He has mine. For years I have followed him. It has been a glorious journey like never before. He continues to take me around the world. I walk in his abundance and goodness. It does not matter about the trials, the tribulations, even during the famine and the hardships of this world in times of lack, I still walk in his abundance and his provision. I am not talking about seeking the material things of this world because Jesus said, seek First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But so when he has our heart, then he has our lives. And then we will walk in this intimate communion with the Lord. It is a relationship that the world does not know, nor will know, that only those that have come to this point, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, that come to this point of putting their lives down before the altar, as you are, with the stain of sin, as you are. But when you can come with this broken heart, a heart that is, it is, is such in a deep, sorrowful state of asking more than forgiveness, but of repentance. As Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. A re the repentance is this such sorrowful state that we turn away we move in a new direction, which can be done when we openly, when we invite Jesus Christ as our Savior. He comes and inhabits. He abides. He resides. He transforms. He manifests in our lives in ways that we cannot even begin to imagine. And so right here, if anyone comes to me because he is the door, he will be saved. He will be saved. A salvation that the world cannot take away. A salvation that is always in abundance. A salvation that will be your comfort and joy during times of misery and despair. That it is a source of my strength. He is my strong tower. He is my all and my all. I regularly travel into the face of danger, but he is always the fourth man in the fire. And I always come out not even smelling like smoke. And even if I have to lay my life down 
To live is Christ and to die is gain. He has my life. Death is just the beginning. When I breathe my last, I will move into paradise to be with my God forevermore. There is just a white, a light weight of affliction in this world. And I am not here to minimize or discourage you or to downplay what you are encountering in this life. But in Jesus Christ, there is more than enough. He is my good shepherd. He is the door. And when you come through this door, you shall be saved. And it is a salvation that the world will not take away. It is a salvation that endures to it all through eternity. But it is, it is the greatest invitation of all. It is the greatest invitation of all times. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? But let us read further. The thief does not come except to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The thief does not come but to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil is the father of lies. The devil wants you sick and miserable. He wants you dead in your sins and so do not listen to the lies of the world because it is a temptation. The father of lies, the master of deceit, tries to, to, to paint and, uh, the, 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 the sin of this world as pleasurable, as desirable, but its end product is death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. There is no one righteous, no, not one, but the gift of eternal life is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. He is the door. He who comes through the door shall be saved. It is the thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy, to leave you sick empty, miserable, but it is in Jesus Christ that I come that you may have life. Oh, hallelujah. It is the life that the world does not know. It is a life that is worth living. I challenge you today to truly come and live before you die. Many people are trying to survive in this world. They're trying to live from just one day to the next. Maybe they're living from paycheck to paycheck. Like I said, I am not here to minimize your troubles, but it, there is more. There is life life, life eternal, life abundant, life joyous, life that the world does not know in Jesus Christ. Yes, I encounter still hardships and tribulations. Yes, I am still hurt by the world, but I walk in victory. I move from victory to victory, from glory to glory, from conquest to conquest, because in Jesus Christ, there is more than enough. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ, he is my all and my hope. If you are walking in defeat, I, hallelujah. If you are walking in defeat, today can be the day of your miracle, of your breakthrough today. Hear my words today. Jesus Christ is the door. If you come through this door, the door, the only door, you will be saved. It is the thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, has come that you may have life. Life eternal, life abundant. But as he said, not just for you to truly live, but that you may know have life and have it more abundantly. There is an overflowing life in Jesus Christ. It, it, because God, he is without limit. He is without depth. We, 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 without uh, uh, limits and his depths are beyond our measure to even begin to comprehend. And so with Jesus Christ, there is always more than enough. In Jesus Christ, he is my life everlasting. He is my provision this time and forevermore. I do not look to the things of this world. I do not let the natural circumstances of this world dictate to me how I will live my life. I live my life according to the Holy Scriptures. I live my life according to specific divine revelation that I receive from the Good Shepherd because when He speaks, He speaks as a King. And so I walk even beyond this rationale of trying to be begin to comprehend where God has taken me. But in my spirit, man, I walk in peace. In my spirit, I know that God will, when I hear that specific calling of the Lord, I will walk with divine expectation and see the victorious hand of the Lord in my life manifest yet again. So there is an abundant life. 
an abundance in the times of lack, an abundance in the times of famine, an abundance when people forsake you and, and for, talk evil about you and abuse you. There is abundance in the things of the Lord. Hear my words. I speak from experience. I have been walking with the Lord for decades now, and my faith just continues to grow. I have seen multitudes, hundreds and hundreds of thousands come to the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in the Lord, there is still abundance that I have not even begun to reach. As the apostles cried out to Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. But in Jesus, there is an abundant life. And this abundance life, it also leads to the overcoming life. An overcoming life. Because when Jesus decrees, he decrees with all authority, the door is open. The door is there. Jesus Christ, the, the invitation is there. Will you receive? Will you receive? I do these broadcasts coming into your home or wherever you may be because this is the one very thing that has changed my life. I am not the same any longer. The old man is dead. The new man lives before you today. And I walk in ways that many do not understand, nor do I expect them to because I walk on a supernatural level with my God in divine dimension. The invitation is there for you now as well. He is the door. He who comes to me shall be saved. This God, he is the one true God of this infinite universe. He is the creator of all. He says of himself, I am the Lord, there is no other. There is no other God besides me. And this God is holy. He said, be holy for I am holy. He gave his holy word to follow, to be blessed, to live in his holy precepts and accordances. But as God is holy, God is love. True love does not force. It freely offers. And so God in his love, he gave us freedom of choice. But in our freedom, we broke the relationship with the holy God through our sinful behaviors and actions. But before a holy God, now covered with the stain of sin, we were utterly condemned, destined to die in our sins and go to hell for eternal condemnation. But as God is love, God said, I will still make the way for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And so God left the riches of heaven. He gave his best for you and I. The, he came down in the incarnation of Jesus Christ and he dwelt among us. He showed us the way to heaven. It was through himself and himself alone as Jesus decreed that he's the way, the truth, and the life. He is the door, the only way by which man can be saved through Jesus Christ and himself alone. And he showed the heart of God, the love of the Father, loving the unlovely, the beggars, the ones that were disease-ridden. He healed them in an instant, lifted them up out of their distress, those that had no importance or merit in the eyes of man. He loved the unlovely. Oh, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. You can know this love today. Hallelujah. And so he showed the love, but also demonstrated the power of God. One touch, he opened the blind eyes and the deaf ears. He has all a rule and authority and dominion over everything of this world, including sickness, sin, disease, and death. With one touch, the dead came back to life. He cleansed the leprous, the demon-possessed, liberated in a moment. Wherever he saw sickness, he healed it. Where he saw those in bondage, he set the captives free. But ultimately, for our ultimate freedom, he came to restore the broken relationship between God and sinful man, which would only could be done through himself and himself alone. The sinless Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, which was the only one that could take away, take away the sin of the world. And so he went to the cross of Calvary for you and I before a holy, just God demanding payment for sin that we could not pay with the stain of sin and condemnation upon our lives. It was Jesus Christ that came, that he died in our place that we may live in him, that he laid down his life that we may rise in him. Oh, hallelujah. So he went to that cross for you and I willingly out of a heart to have this relationship restored. And when he had shed his blood, covered the price of our sin. He said it is finished. And he yielded
and also go to church. If there is a church body in your in your area, uh, I'm not so much talking about a church building with four walls. I am the church. You are the church. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that now lives in you. And so, but the family loves one another. The family gathers communion together. And we can do so much more together than we can apart. The family loves one another, helps one another. And we go farther and further when we are together. They lift you up in your times of distress and encourage you in the momentous times. And I lastly challenge you in this. Be faithful. Remain faithful. Jesus said, he who endures to the end shall be saved. It is not in your own power. It is in the power of the Spirit of God that now dwells in you, which can be done as you continue to take the steps of faith. Man may forsake you or abandon you, but God will never leave you. He will not forsake you ever. He will strengthen you. And as you take the steps of faith, he will bless you in turn to be a great blessing unto others. And if I do not see you again in this world, I will see you in heaven one day. Hallelujah. God is a God who saves and he is a God who heals. If you need a healing, God can touch you where you are. His eternal name is Jehovah Rapha, God our healer. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. So I speak in right now. Lift up your praises with me now. Let us come in prayer and commanding healing in the authority and power of Jesus Christ. Move in the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ and that he completed for us 2,000 years ago. Father, right now in the mighty and the holy name of Jesus, Lord, I loose healing anointing upon your people that break every yoke of bondage of sickness right now by the authority and power of Jesus Christ. I loose your healing, your promises of healing, Jesus, upon your people, Lord. Every sickness healed now from the top of their head to the bottom of, your, of their feet, God. I rebuke every painful disorder right now. Receive in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak forth mobility restored. Even mutism. I speak that the mute mouth open in the name of Jesus. Bondage broken. Demon possession broken now in the name of Jesus. Receive in the mighty and the holy name of Jesus. Victory now in that name above all names Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory Lord. This is Pastor and Missionary Evangelist Brad Spurlock. Blessings unto you until the next time. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.